Hello, and welcome to this session on compound interest and APR from me, Mr McIver, at the London Central and Northwest Maths Hub here at Marylebone School. In order to make sense of this session, you'll need to be familiar with the idea of working with percentages using multipliers. In particular, you're going to have to know how to apply it to compound interest problems such as this one. I hope you can quickly spot that the simplest way to work this out is by doing that. You'll also need to be familiar with the idea of AER, that's annual equivalent rate, and annualization. It explains how a gross percentage rate of 2.96% can lead to a 3% annual equivalent rate through the process of monthly annualization, which you work out using this formula here. And that's just what we call the AER formula applied to monthly annualization. Assuming you're happy with both those concepts, let's move on. So, APR, what's it all about? Well, it's about things like this, and this, and this. Those APR rates you see quoted all over adverts for loan. APR stands for Annual Percentage Rate, and it gets applied to anything you want to borrow. When you borrow money, you use APR. When you are lending money to the bank in the form of an investment or a deposit account, you talk about AER. How do you work it out? Well, just like with AER, annualization is involved, but I'm afraid it's a bit more complicated than that. We're going to look at those complications one by one. APR includes annualization and charges. The best way to explain this is through an example. Say I want to borrow a thousand pounds over two years, and Bank One offers me 12% gross annualized monthly and no additional charges. Bank Two, on the other hand, offers me 8% gross paid annually, no annualization. So far, it's looking a lot better. But this offer includes a £100 arrangement fee, which is added to the loan at the start of the transaction. How do those two deals compare? And what are the respective APRs? Here's how we work them out. The first one is quite straightforward. After one year, you owe this much. After two years, you owe that amount. And the APR is simply 1.01 to the 12. That's just the annualization formula that we learned about when we were looking at AER. In the case of Bank 2, the situation is slightly different. We don't have any annualization to worry about, just this £100 arrangement fee that gets added on to the loan at the outset. This means that at the start of the first year of the loan, you actually owe the bank £1,100. And that gets charged interest at 8% with the £1,000 you actually walked away with. So, at the end of the first year, you owe £1,188. Already a bit more than it looks like over here. Let's see what happens in year two. Now you owe £1,283.04. Not quite such a big difference as there was in the first year, but still more than you would have under the 12% scheme with no arrangement fee. This raises the question of how you actually calculate the APR in this situation. First of all, you have to figure out the multiplier that gets you from the £1,000 you actually borrowed to the £1,283.04 that you ended up having to repay. That's quite easy. Just do a division sum and you get the two-year multiplier. Because the interest rate is the same over two years, to find the one-year multiplier, we simply take the square root of that number and get a yearly multiplier of 1.1327. So the right-hand deal corresponds to an APR of 13.27%. Notice nobody's actually charging you 13.27%. That figure is an effective rate. It just provides an easy way of comparing different deals from different banks. And that's why all banks and lending agencies have to show their APRs so that customers can make a reasonable comparison between the different deals on offer. When we compare the two different things, AER, annual equivalent rate, with APR, annual percentage rate, we find that AER simply includes annualization, whereas AER includes annualization and charges. Oh, and it also includes repayment schedules. I told you it was more complicated. So what on earth are repayment schedules? 
Let's look at another imaginary loan situation. Let's suppose I want to borrow £1,000 for two years at 10% APR. After two years, I owe £1,210. So that's how much I pay the bank back. Only it's not. If that was the amount I was to pay the bank back, that would mean the bank had made me a deal like this, where they loaned me £1,000 and I paid absolutely nothing for two years and then paid the whole thing back in one go at the end of the term. And of course, no real bank organises loans like this. That calculation there is irrelevant. When you borrow money, you generally repay in instalments. That's chunks. And more often than not, they are equal instalments. Banks and lenders will make you an offer and say it will cost you this much per month. So now we're going to look at how those equal instalments are worked out by looking at some repayment plans. To keep the numbers easier, we're going to use an invented plan where we're borrowing £1,000 for two years at 10% per year. And this is payable in two equal annual instalments. In practice, you very often pay back monthly, but the same principle applies. The calculations just get rather tedious. Now, we just worked out on the previous screen that after two years, we'd owe this amount if it was just ratcheting up at the rate of 10% a year. So I suppose it might make sense to say, well, let's just divide the total by two and say, why don't you just make two payments of £605? OK, let's see how that actually works out in practice. At the start of year one, I owe £1,000. And at the end, I owe £1,000 times... 1.1. Oh, and then I make a payment of £605. That means on the first day of year two, all I owe the bank is 1100 minus 605 that I've already paid back. That's £495, less than half of the original loan. Well, if I add 10% to this, all I get is 544.50. So a payment of £605 is far too much. If the bank had told me it's 10% a year, and that will be two payments of £605, that bank would be lying. In reality, they'd be charging me a lot more than 10% to justify those kind of repayments. The reason why it's too much is because I'm not really borrowing £1,000 for two years. I'm borrowing £1,000 for a year, then paying a chunk of it off, and then just borrowing the leftover bit for the next year. So how on earth am I going to figure out what the payments might be? So let's look at this again, but this time putting in a letter for our annual payments. At year one, I owe £1,000. We'll get rid of the pound sign. It just clutters things up. At the end of that year, I'm going to owe 1,000 times 1.1 pounds. I'm deliberately leaving it as a calculation so that you can see what's going on more clearly. And at the end of that year, I make a payment of a. I could have chosen any letter, but this is the one that pops up in the formula that's most commonly used by bankers. So at the beginning of year two, I owe a thousand times 1.1 minus a pounds. And now the expressions get a little more complicated because now I have to add 10% to that whole amount, which is that expression there. And at the end of year two, I make my second payment. I can use the same letter because I'm paying this off in two equal instalments. But I'm going to pay the whole thing off over two years. So that letter A has to be the same as the amount I actually owe. So I can rewrite that last expression like that. And now I've got an equation which I can solve. First, multiply out the brackets. Then gather up all my A's on one side, and finally divide through by that 2.1 next to the A. And if I do that sum, 1,000 times 1.1 squared over 2.1, I get 576.19. So, 1,000 pounds for two years at 10% APR leads to two annual payments of 576 pounds 19. And that same principle applies whether you're paying off a loan monthly over five years, 10 years, 25 years like a mortgage, it doesn't matter. This is how it's done. Let's look at what's going on here in a slightly different way. Here's how we worked out the payments. I'm now going to rewrite that last bit of algebra with the letter A on the right-hand side. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to do some rearranging. 
But this time, I'm not going to add together the a's on the right-hand side. I'm going to leave it as a sum. So I've got 1,000 times 1.1 squared equals that thing on the right. I'm now going to divide through by 1.1 squared so that the number on the left is the same as the total amount I originally borrowed. I then do some cancelling out with the fractions on the right, and I end up with that rather curious algebraic sum on the right-hand side involving fractions with powers on the bottom. Look at that figure of £1,000 up at the top here. Let's suppose it was a random number. £2,000, £10,000, £100,000. Tell you what, let's just give it a letter. C. I am borrowing C pounds for two years at 10% per annum. Well, all this means to all this stuff written down below is that I have to change all those number thousands to C's. I've now got a slightly different formula at the bottom of the page. What about that 10% APR? Let's make that a random number, 1%, 2%. Oh, I don't know, let's just call it I. Notice, I'm not writing I as a percentage. I'm writing it as a decibel. This whole thing is done in decibels. We're always working with multipliers. Well, if I is the APR as a decimal, then all my 1.1s simply turn into 1 plus I's. And now I get this formula down at the bottom. C equals A over 1 plus I plus A over 1 plus I squared. So why did I go through all that? So that I ended up with a special case of this formula here. This is sometimes called the APR formula. It appears in the formula sheet you have in your exam. And this is just a more general form of that C equals A over 1 plus I thing you've got up above. All that squiggly thing there, it's actually a Greek letter S, sigma. It's short for sum. It just means you add a bunch of things together. This thing in here is a fraction, so you're adding a bunch of fractions together. The fractions all look like these two here. Here's how you can use the APR formula to figure out a repayment schedule. Once again, I'm going to go for two equal payments. This time I'm borrowing £3,000 at 12% a year. How much do I pay each year? Here's the formula. First thing I do is write down C. Well, that's the amount I'm borrowing. That's £3,000, right? 3000 Equals, well, that's just equals. Next, I have to add up, now, two equal payments. K is just a letter that stands for account of all the different payments. So I have to go from K equals one up to two. I'm going to add two fractions because there are two payments. And finally, I have to account for this 12% APR. Well, of course, 12% is simply a decimal value of 0.12, so my 1 plus i simply becomes a 1 plus 0.12. There are still these rather odd a terms with little k's down there. The simplest thing to do is to rewrite it like that. All my a values are the same because they are equal payments. So to work out what a is, I just solve the equation on the screen now. I multiply through by the biggest denominator I've got on the right-hand side. In this case, it's 1.12 squared, and I get that. I cancel down my fractions a bit, and I get that. So now I know that 3763.2 equals 2.12a. I divide through by 2.12 and get 2 equal payments of £1,775.09. And, and that is how you use the APR formula. I'll leave that screen showing for you now, and you can work through some problems on your own.